gonna lie. I saw it like <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to NBA Muslims Art and Society. This is a really quick impromptu art and society. I finally got to watch X-Men. People have been saying you need to watch it. I'm very mm -hmm. much one of those people who wait till it comes on Netflix type of deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, you money. have to watch this. You have to watch it. You have to watch it in the theater. And it was so, so much so that my husband actually was like, I, I was like, okay, fine. I'll just wait because it doesn't seem like I'm getting to do it. And he just called <laughs> me and said, I'm taking you to see X-Men, uh, 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 Black Panther right now. I'm taking you because it's important that you see it. So I saw it. So I finally saw the movie that I really needed to talk to some people about. It was a coincidence that we watched it on the same day too. We watched it on the same day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, I watched it like opening, like the premiere. I watched oh, it opening. Oh, that's cool. I watched oh, it. Wow. That must have been I watched it. The, I watched it that Monday it came out. That holiday, that President's really? Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I introduce you? We've been talking since before we started, so this is very. This is very much. This is Black Girl Magic. Black Muslim. Mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. That's good. I want. I, I got the fabulous <laughs> ladies together to talk about this movie. And I wanted to go across the board. I really wanted people from a African American descent, which is me, and African descent, African immigrant. And it's just like, it's great because this movie is really, really has a lot of layers. And we will not get to address everything because there's so much to this movie. So, welcome, yeah. Isra, Papasha, and Hi. Hi. to Hi. our Okay. Like right off the bat, I want to address. I want to address something that I didn't want to. I feel mm -hmm. like it is a sad commentary that we need to mm -hmm. in day and age, and considering how uh, how, but it is really just really is indicative of how ignorant uh, uh, many M Muslims are about is things like Islamophobia and racism, and how yes. it really is this need. And there's this mm -hmm. whole cry from non-black Muslims. Mm -hmm. yes. Non-black Muslims, because there's, uh, there's quite a few non-black Muslims that are like, yeah, they're bugging. I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. And <laughs> that's the whole thing with this little teeny tiny two minutes in the movie, and they're crying that it's Islamophobic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when I went in and I saw the movie, like I had heard about it, I read articles oh. about it and everything, and um I tried not to be biased about it. I tried to be as objective as possible. Even though in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, when have you ever cared about black people? You know, so now all of a sudden, exactly. yeah. but I just was like, you know what, let me go in. And I watched the two minutes of that movie. It's like, you know, it, like it's a blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. I just was like, yeah, they're kind of bugging when it comes to that. Only because mm -hmm. I feel like, first of all, it, they're overriding some really, really important messaging in those two minutes of the movie. But mm -hmm. also, it's just like they take things like someone saying wallahi, which, you know, guess yeah. what? Uh, Non-Muslim Arabs say wallahi. This mm -hmm. is right. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of Afghans say wallahi too. Yeah. And a lot yeah. Of too. So it's just like, you know, so that makes it Islamophobic. Also, like, what is it? Um, they had, um, they were wearing like the turban things on it. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. you know, that's a vast majority of Muslims, you know, wake up call, you know, Islam is not an article of clothing, okay? You can dress right, right. perfectly, but the clothing mm -hmm. is very, very, uh, very, very culturally specific. And mm -hmm. also people were mad because they took off the things and put it around their shoulders like yeah. that. And I'm just like, yeah. I just think it's a sad commentary that in a time where I think black people, okay, Muslim and non-Muslim have a cultural production to which they can celebrate their blackness and start to discuss some very pertinent issues in black culture overall, globally, not just in the United States, but globally, that Muslims have to kind of pivot and tell non-black Muslims you know, no, this is not Islamophobic. First of all, it really, really, I think, says we need to know exactly what Islamophobia exactly. is. Exactly. It's because the racism thing, I mean, they're trying to say the movie is racist, so because they cannot, it doesn't stick, so they have to turn to Islam Islamophobia. That's what it is, simple as it is. Yeah, yeah if they have to bring something, bring something, yeah, I think something stick. Right. It's not sticking. Right. I, I'm like, a two seconds, yeah. I'm like, what? Because I didn't read yeah. any of those articles. 
when I see like a non a, a non black Muslim, you know, post one of those articles saying it's not oh the only like a, like to think to conceive that people missed that it was Islamophobic. I don't even read it. I went to see it for myself, and I didn't think it was Islamophobic. Right. I thought that you yeah. know. You know, these people they didn't like each other too much. You know, they come to help each other because they're the same people and they don't want to be praised too much. Okay, we helped you. Let's keep it quiet. We don't have to talk about it. It doesn't mean we don't have to, you know, it doesn't mean anything is wrong with yeah. what is wrong? No, I, yeah. I totally agree with um, you. Even for me, when I first saw the movie, I, I yeah. actually felt, you know, it was almost like a hiccup of a scene. And, yes. you know, I didn't think, <laughs> I, I didn't think it needed to judge sort of the, you know, the grand like, There were too much into it. And, they, you know, like, and, and so, yeah. but I think um, also it shows what I found very interesting, you know, it also also shows some people sort of um, not understanding, I think, even Islam, how it is practiced or shown in Africa, in Africa. or specifically mm -hmm. West Africa, because exactly. the the interpretation of, the, you know, their understanding of hijab is sort of through their lens of what yeah. they think should be done, you mm -hmm. know, and so you find people, you know, Islam, the outer garment is very different in different parts of the world, but they're mm -hmm. still Muslims, and I, auto, yeah. I almost felt as if they were being a bit, I don't know, judgmental, because they're saying as if we were Muslim enough. You know, they see that the blacks are dressed in a certain way and they're like, oh, that that is, you know, not Islamic or that is Islamophobic yeah, or something like that. Like and so, secular. Right. And so in and any secular. event, I just I just thought one, I thought it was anyways an important scene because, one, yes. you know, it, it brought up an issue which I felt has been very quiet, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. which was sad. Even that week, the fall week, week Black Panther came out another hundred set of Nigerian girls were kidnapped again. So yeah. where are they? I mean, they didn't come out to denounce that. Where are the fundraisers to help, you know, the Nigerian girls? They like to attack, but there's no fundraisers, there's no support. And so I think the movie was great in bringing out that, that yeah. you know, as an awareness. So yeah yeah um i, I kind of wanted to add um just like more for that first scene um i think people have this idea um like a lot of muslims in the west that islamophobia is just like oh bad images of muslims and i think that's just like a very incomplete picture because um you know it's a lot more structural and of course you have like you know muslim racism like on a daily basis um, but this the, the scene didn't show, you know, an act like, you know, it didn't act, it wasn't trying to portray um, some African Muslim with like Islamophobic like tendencies. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, you know, like, or make a terrorist joke. Like they were like literally showing Boko Haram, which is act, which is act, which they are actually terrorists. Like that's basically the point, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that scene was important, too. I think just for like uh, a, another larger conversation about like, you know, um, Africans helping Africans, you know, because exactly. another critique yeah. was like, oh, you know, Wakanda was isolated and, you know, it was never colonized and it never actually helped. And this was a very good example of Nakia, for example, you know, a Wakandan African woman literally, you know, going, being a spy and actually, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, saving, helping other African people. So I think right. it that like that scene was like very important for that. I agree. I agree with you. I think that there was so much more to that scene than 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 yeah. what the the whole idea of Islamophobia is a deflection, and that's the reason yeah. why I think that uh, the new it's book, not gonna stick. <laughs> it's not gonna stick. Book, <laughs> we call it big yeah. important because that's what he does. He presents a frame of of, of an American uh, uh, contact to Islamophobia, and like you mm -hmm. said, structural. So that's that's yeah. what talks about it's about how it's structural how it's personal and how it's dialectic so it's a really good book and i think more muslims need to count now that it's out read it and kind of really so that you know being able to to con construct a framework and work from that and articulate from that is very very important that's what he's done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i also think like you know it's very it was very very subtle which i you know as a cultural critic i know that things can be right. subtle so you can have bias Dem demonstrated in a very, very subtle way. You can have Islamophobia demonstrated in a very, very subtle way. I don't think that's what happened in this movie. I think yeah. that what happened was, uh, first and foremost, okay, for me, it was, it, it set up Kala's mindset, okay? Because the only reason why he got in that suit, the only reason why he jumped on that truck 
was right. Ikea. He was not thinking yeah. about anybody else. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah. He was that's true. For her. And yeah. the entire movie, she was the one that was constantly like, I don't, I cannot be here and comfortable while I know other people are suffering. Mm -hmm. So I think that, mm -hmm. that that scene set up something very, very poignant because he was ready to kill everybody. She had to stop right. him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And kind of give humanity to people because that's the only thing he was concerned about. The only thing he was concerned about was getting his woman. He was a male in power that wanted to get his woman. And so right. kind of turn around and make that Islamophobic, especially when you look at the rest of the, the movie. The movie. Mm -hmm. the influence, like right. you know, Muslim cultural influence. I mean, even down to, I don't know, for me, those towers with the things sticking out of it look just like the um, masjid from Tim like West African it, Islamic exactly. architecture. Yes, there. there's that yeah. famous masjid in in Mali that has that particular. It's one of the oldest masjids in in uh, you know Africa that that well, you know that so influence. I think we made. I think I made those connections. I think a lot of Black Muslims. Yeah, yeah. Even the Merchant uh, Tribe. Yeah. You know, like you know, I fell a part of a movie when I saw the Merchant Tribe because we're merchant. You know, I was like, we're represented right there. You know, it's right. like you know, he was yeah. really powerful. They weren't, they weren't isolated because yeah. no. one, of the, one of the people in his council, okay, uh -huh. one of the uh -huh. believer leaders, yeah. which I thought was like really, really indicative of. Mm -hmm. uh, of the merging of cultures. Mm -hmm. He had a big old lip plate, like down to there. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, even, even the Fulani tribe was represented. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was very yeah. subtle and well done. You know, they tried to put a piece of everybody in there, you know. Um, right. It wasn't, it wasn't far-fetched. For me, it wasn't far-fetched. Yeah. No. No. It wasn't like superficial on a surface yeah. at yeah. all. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. far-fetched. They, you yeah. know, they used what was there and tried to make it a little more cooler or whatever. Right. Or yeah. modern, I think, futuristic. Modern. And what, what futuristic. is interesting. Uh -huh. What is interesting is that um, I, I was reading sort of some articles and also seeing some videos online. You mm -hmm. know, these when you look at Ryan Krueger, the director, and other people on his team, they were very um, deliberate because they did a lot of research. They actually mm -hmm. spent time and traveled mm -hmm. to different parts of West Africa and South yeah. Africa, mm -hmm. down to the costume designer. Even the person who did the score of mm -hmm. the music, you know, mm -hmm. he had sounds. He even had um, well, one of a famous Senegalese singer there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, so heard that. I, I was think, like, "Oh, that's right. know, I love yeah. that." And so, I love the and music I, because I knew right. I knew this kind of music. That's you know, exactly. you know, and that's so, like everything. So, so right. like, and I think I have a question. And I, I think yeah. So I'm from, from someone from mm -hmm. a background on this side of the water because it's definitely I see in your faces, in your eyes, <laughs> these connections that I don't have. I just simply right. Don't have. Uh huh. Yeah. To okay. me, quite honestly, African music is African music. Oh, that's from there. Oh, that's from there. Oh, you're from there. Not from here. Oh, yeah. that's from there. So you're saying that unlike yeah. what typically happens when mm -hmm. you're talking right. about like movies of this scale, mm -hmm. right, the people involved in it did their homework. Culture, yes. Cultural yeah, did. development. They and did. It, it, yeah. It, it did. did. They did. they did, and it the fact so that they did, right, and the fact that they did their homework. There's a part of me that's why I don't think they're Islamophobic because they traveled to West Africa. People know West Africa is literally the hub, also like of Islam, also <laughs> because yeah. there's a huge Islamic tradition in that area. Mm -hmm. So they've encountered it. I mean, when they encountered speaking with, I think his name is Baba Mali, the Senegalese mm -hmm. singer. I mm -hmm. mean, this. He's that whole Fulani tribe. If you look into the history, they're Muslims. So why would they disrespect, you know, exactly. Muslims if, yeah. if they if they if did you, all that research? So yeah. that's why I said yeah. it's not Islamophobic, Phobic. and it goes back to my original point that some of these people who are criticizing the movie they don't do know not anything. have the education on on uh, West Africa and the rest of the continent. They have a particular lens, I have my, and I have that's my own it. opinion about that. I have my own opinion yeah. about that, and I'm going to. Question very quickly, and I want to hear from Isra. Sure. And I, because one of the things that happens when we're talking about a, a global culture, a global Muslim culture, that mm -hmm. is so Mesa centric, and mm -hmm. we're and there's so much aversion to blackness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out of that, you there becomes like this internalized type of bias uh, mm -hmm. 
where you construct this idea of Muslimness based mm -hmm. on your your oppressions, oppressors, based on the very surface level, two dimensional rendition of what a Muslim is. And you kind of internalize that and do that. That's what I think is happening here. I think that yeah. plenty of non-black Muslims that have kind of like, you know, they're so quick to erase and ignore just how diverse uh, uh, Muslim culture is globally and and mm -hmm. ignore and they, 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 they don't pay attention to black Muslim culture, how black Muslim culture has centuries old, by the way, mm -hmm. yes. has developed yes. in, 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 in so like the century, places all the way yeah. outside of Africa. It's just yeah. like very rich. And so when they, when they've got those kind of blinders on, yeah. they only see Muslimness as certain things, when yeah. it boils down to it, that's all they see. You know, I said, mm -hmm. you know, Marguerite Aziza put in her article, I said, well, maybe they weren't comfortable around all those black bodies. I <laughs> meant they, they're not, exactly. they're not around yeah. all those black bodies. If you have any kind of cultural competency, mm -hmm. you're able to look at, at, at things, at least to say, I may right. not know about mm -hmm. this particular culture, but I know that it's not mine. So let me sit back and learn some stuff. So the kind right. of yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think like this whole yeah. homophobic conversation where there is none just kind of conveys that. Okay. Now, Isra, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I first of all, I definitely agree. Um, I think it's this thing. Well, first of all, I think it's this thing when people kind of see like black in a title, um, or like of something, they kind of put in like people of color, which mm -hmm. is like a whole nother thing, you know, this like, you know, this equalization of like black yeah. and people of color, they're the same. So mm -hmm. like, maybe we can criticize it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's also like, you know, just this race, like who can make the, the most sexiest decolonial critique on like, you know, black, uh, black statements, black movies, black cultural productions. Um, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of like critiques saying like, oh, how anti-black or capitalist it was. I'm like, you know, we exist in a society that is anti-black that is capitalist then yeah. of course it's and it, everything is already anti-black and capitalist like why why does this movie mm -hmm. make such a like big impact for you like why is right. this why is it producing so much like critiques especially you know from like non-black muslims and like you said mm -hmm. i think a lot of them you just don't really know how african muslims practice their islam on the continent right like i'm from sudan and a lot of you know like how women dress uh, muslim women dress in sudan is very different like you know even though we speak arabic and we have an arab culture we still have a distinct different difference in how we practice our islam and that was very very that was completely lost um in a lot of discussions i had with non-black muslims um, especially, yeah. I think it's because they can't see Islam outside of being uh, brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah. And I think that's, I think that's, that's a, I think that's an example of internalized Islamophobia as well. He race every dag on <laughs> body, especially black people. It's just like it's just the most yeah. accepted one. But mm. look at East Asians. You know, like like Malaysian Muslims. They're the largest population. Right. How in the world they're not? So it's just like it's absolutely ridiculous, and it's just yeah. like you know, go find a seat somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, just kind of try to learn something. So I just yeah. think that's the reason why. And ironically enough, I just saw on Twitter. I just saw on Twitter that mm -hmm. Khalid Beydoun, when he was approached by a South Asian woman, mm -hmm. right. asked him, "Why did you put a black woman on the cover of your book?" Wow. <laughs> yeah, I read that yeah. today. Okay. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, with like with all this talk on like you know about Islamophobia in movies, I think this really just kind of goes to show like how internalized and how how internalized Islamophobia and anti-blackness is right. in Muslim communities because you know they're literally showing their own bias, their own anti-blackness. You know, with these kind of sentiments and statements, honestly, you know, yeah. it's just like right there. I don't know why right. we cannot concede well, that I all the racism, you know, contributed to the time. spread of Islam. Yeah, yeah. we all <laughs> contributed to the spread of Islam, but they cannot right. add that. Yeah, up. they cannot yeah. add that up. We gave it your time, ladies. I'm sorry. I got to shut this down because I, I, no, there was too much <laughs> stuff with this movie that I love. Okay. okay. I want to get into mm -hmm. Tala mm -hmm. and Killmonger. Okay. Oh, sad. Okay. Don't get yeah. bad. Don't get mm -hmm. bad. 
Okay, don't get mad. Okay. All right, and you can tell whether you can tell you can tell me whether or not you think I'm full of it or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, I didn't really like Chala all that much, but <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but Chala and Killmonger, right? Mm -hmm. Professor mm -hmm. X and Magneto. Okay, oh I'm sorry. Are you knew you were gonna. <laughs> Go there. <laughs> which, I loved, which I loved, and this is the reason why I loved it. Okay, okay, because you know, Stan Lee he has said that he based Professor X and Magneto on Martin Luther King. Oh, and Max. Malcolm X, yeah. So he based it on that. So the whole idea of this argument between oppressed people about how mm -hmm. to exist and combat oppression, I love that they did that because Tala was not from an oppressed people. Okay, so the whole question is if you do not see yourself as connected to the oppressed, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. do you do? So Chala didn't, okay. Mm -hmm. Nakia did, that's why her behind was in that truck. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. The one with the blue robe, you know, the guy that played Get Out, I'm so bad at names. You know, the one with the blue robe. Oh, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, yeah, Daniel Kaluuya. Moreover, he's Ugandan, by the way, like me. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the character's name? What's the character's name? Wakabi. Wakabi, yeah. Wakabi, <laughs> what did Wakabi say? Wakabi was like, look, I'll go fight for them, but don't bring them back here. Yeah, he said <laughs> that. And when, you know, it's like, African don't all, I mean, but, I mean, all African don't have the same point of view. We all have different points of view. Right. That's what it is. Why? That, that's what she experienced with Wakabi. He's like, well, we don't want them here. We're going to be screwing up everything for us. Right. You will find other Africans will say that we need their uh, bro uh, brothers. It's like that. What it's I so think polarized. Patience, so what I think it does, what I think it does, first of all, mm -hmm. because one of the things that I see a lot of is mm -hmm. like the people have, co have to come more and more to reality, especially. Uh, people over here in the United mm -hmm. States and, and mm -hmm. African Americans in the United States because mm -hmm. we get yeah. a lot about Africa, mm -hmm. just like everybody else. Of mm -hmm. course, is that there is this whole this there's this whole continent of people with all these different experiences, and some of them are privileged. So when uh, you're in, I don't know, I can't. <laughs> when you're coming from that space of privilege, when yeah. you have that privilege, and you do not connect. Mm -hmm. with oppressed mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. okay what mm -hmm. do you do i think that was child's well, problem well okay. she, she, in the context of the movie, let's speak first in the yeah. context of the movie. Yes, mm -hmm. T'Challa, you know, all black, like I, I actually believe that for me, I might be sitting next to a sister and in this particular moment, I might have the privilege and this sister might be oppressed. Yeah. Whereas I go somewhere else and I sit with another person, another black sister, but it might be reversed. I'm the oppressed yeah. and she's privileged. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, in the context of the comics and the Marvels, yes, T'Challa did seem a bit privileged because he didn't understand the concept of how can we be oppressed we're royalty i mean you know mm -hmm. he, and that's why he was shocked when his father told him of the secret right yes. but what i didn't like about this movie is that people think that is happening in the continent which is false i'm coming from yeah. uganda and i have seen you know colonialization is something not so far to the point that even my father mm -hmm. Like when he was a kid and he went to school, his teachers were colonizers. Okay, Uganda. Yeah. Yes, just, My you know was, was in that same so, era too. So they know oppression. So I believe Africans know it because I mean, to the point that my mom and my parents they tell me things. Even my grandparents. This thing is so a lived experience that it's been transferred to us. So we know what it feels like. But I think we've just experienced it in a different yeah, continent, different, different right? Culture. And so I I don't think but, the person. Personally, I don't uh, feel. Then just, we came here, though. And then you come here again, and then, but there's just sort of another level, okay? But you're right. I agree. Like somebody said, we do have to give, you know, respect and, you know, also acknowledge. Yes, there's been a civil rights movement which has allowed us black people from mm -hmm. the continent to come here and actually thrive and do well. But it still doesn't matter, just like Jay-Z's okay. song, you know, and I know which song, you probably yeah. know what song I'm referring to. It doesn't matter who you are, they still see you like that, you know. But yeah. the situation I, is, yes, I for the purpose of the movie, there's privilege, but in the continent, it's a different dynamic. Okay. Yeah. I, that, that's what I mean, I'm trying to understand, because what the film has set up, in my mm -hmm. mind, and maybe mm -hmm. in other people's minds, is that there is a level of privilege that's enjoyed by some. 
<laughs> and maybe even just the level of privilege in, you know, I like for instance, I think that all of you enjoy a level of privilege that I'll never have because my mm -hmm. ancestry's been cut short. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's a level of privilege. So I'm I'm wondering is the movie setting that up and is how much of how much of that is real? Because yeah. It's definitely going to affect the mindsets of people who are watching that movie. Mm -hmm. So, how yeah. that is real? I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think just to say is, I think we need to understand like what we mean by privilege. Um, just because people might be equating, you know, white privilege or class privilege to what we're talking about here. So, I think you know, in American talk context, when we talk about privilege, you know, specifically white privilege, that exists because, um, like in a historic colonization of the Americas which grants, you know, white people privilege on a daily basis. And I think, I mean, just like the sister said, I think the dynamic is very different currently um, throughout the continent because how colonization has kind of like, you know, affected even like my parents, um, it's, you know, it's left a lot of, you know, African economies very dependent on, you know, Western nations, um, like, you know, just on that. So they, can, they can't really survive independently. That's why we still have neo-colonialism for that. Right. So I think there's that, but just to go to your question about T'Challa, I mean, I think we're, we're talking specifically just about T'Challa as a one person as a king, right. but I'm interested to see like, you know, the, the level of classes in Wakanda. So like how do poor Wakandans relate to, I guess maybe the elite in Wakanda. You know, you had Wakabi there, right? I thought that, I was thinking that too. Yeah, but I you had Wakabi there and no, he was, you know, you know what? They you addressed know? it. They addressed it in the movie. If you recall, they yeah. said that you had the tribes, and everyone had literally a fair. If you read the comics, mm -hmm. like everyone had a fair like chance of challenging yeah. to become Black Panther. So that is sort of an interesting dynamic. It's not like I think it I is. like to believe that it's not like a caste system, but rather people can yeah. rise. But you have yeah. to, no, that to be royalty, though. You have to be royalty to be able to challenge. And that, oh, really? and then, yeah, you have to be royalty to be challenged. Like, you know, all these, uh, all these tribes have people at the top, and they say, okay, mm -hmm. we have our representative. That's, That's what I thought. Leader. Which are yeah. men. Yeah. Well, leave that alone. Let's leave that alone. The tribal leader, <laughs> leaders with your men, but let's leave that alone. Because you know, a coin would just do. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> but you know, in the comics, though, actually, Shuri, mm -hmm. and this might be a spoiler alert, but just Shuri eventually becomes Black Panther in, in, in the comics. Right. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I didn't get that far into yeah. the comics. So I mean, that's it's not, it's not surprising. I don't like, so she challenges. Yeah. It's, not, it's not surprising though, because there are a lot of African queens that rule right. forever, you know? The queen, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But, yeah. But, yeah. Let's go back. Let's go back to Wakanda. Sure. Okay, Wakanda. Yeah. Okay. okay, back to Wakanda. Back to Wakanda. You had I, you yeah, Chala. Whole tribe. Why were they out there in the mountains? Why did they choose to be out there and stay out there? Even though they did have a voice, because he came he challenged, he came back into the challenge. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. Just, what is it about that society, okay, that is is kind of, that they decided that they wanted to stay outside of that society? So perhaps there oh, was yeah. some level of classism that they decided to stay out of. First of all, secondly, mm -hmm. okay, do in my opinion, okay, and you can again tell me if you think I'm totally off. I think that Wakanda is on borrowed time, and I think that the filmmakers kind of showed that because. They still had to go to the UN, all right, which is white. Yeah. Community. Yeah. They they mm -hmm. still had to hide themselves from the rest of the world. So like like you said, uh was it you is what I was like, even if you had like even if you're rich in that nation, it's still dependent on uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for African so, countries, yeah. So it's like they still have that. So they weren't completely independent. Because nothing happens in a bubble. It's a globe, it's one globe, it's right. like, yeah. not going yeah. anywhere. So I think that they want to borrow time. They I don't just want to show, realize show, that. I think they're trying to show their strength. So they thought that the UN would be the place to show it. Because like, you know, it's not like, not only African country do that. There's some other country around the world, a Muslim country will do the same thing. They are powerful, they already paid their debt, but they go to those, you know, big, you know, gathering to be like, hey, the world is bigger than, you know, than you guys, you know? It's just, sometimes it's a statement. Sometimes it's a statement. I don't think that, I, I don't I think, I feel like I, there's a lot. <laughs> I, I think that when you make, 
I think that even the most the richest uh, non-white countries, mm -hmm. okay, when they involve themselves in the UN, they leave themselves vulnerable. Not saying that they shouldn't. It's just mm -hmm. a reality. But I vultures always that come that and take you know scavenge what they want. There's always oh, vultures out there. Yeah. There was Wall Street. That's the reason a lot of people hide. Yeah. You hide in plain sight for there's a reason you had you know a lot of African hide in plain sight. You know, because there are vultures. There are vultures out there. You know, when you start showing up, what happened to Mali? What happened to Mali? You know, like, you started going around giving gold to everybody, and people just yeah. came and took everybody. You know, that's a thing. So, okay. Right. okay, so now considering that, considering that you gotta show you, you know, know like, you can't hide in plain not, sight. Claw, Claw was the representation of the royal knocking at his door. At yeah. Khan, yes. Door. Yes. They, they yeah. were on borrowed time, okay? Because mm -hmm. it was going to be war clause. And mm -hmm. I know that the movie represents, uh, tries to represent Killmonger as the, the, the biggest threat. Mm -hmm. Right. But far was not the biggest threat. Okay. No. Always call it colonial white center. I, I was disappointed with the, 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 the part that, that uh, Kimonga played because I wanted to see another African American that wasn't like, you know, as hateful as Killmonger. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? Because not. Killmonger wasn't African American, okay? Well, the well, well, second okay. generation well, was Wakandan. He's still black. He's still black. His mom is African American. He's Wakandan. He can pick his nationality. You know, he's exactly. Wakandan. Yeah. He can work as African American, so he can pick his nationality. I felt like, you know, that's what. He never felt no, he never represented or presented himself as anything but Wakanda. And fact, he wanted to help everybody else. He wanted to go out and help people and build his own empire, by the way. No, 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 no. What, he, no, that's where I disagree with him. Kill, Killmonger, actually, I believe when I saw his character, to be mm -hmm. honest, and I, I understand why people relate to him, but personally for me, I just thought he was a person with short-term girls. There was nothing long-term no, about him. Yeah, he just he was like once he said burn it all he's I'm like burn this. Why? <laughs> you know and so and it's funny you know and when i see it's funny i i was in you know speaking with somebody an african american he's like oh i just love that part i'm like but why i mean the whole point is for you to elevate your people but you see how short term he is and of yeah. course there's that famous quote people like quote when he's there you know because he has a knife in his chest and i'm like look oh, this God. i mean he even had an opportunity yeah. to redeem himself so and well, then exactly. with the I with the whole, you know, and I just could not believe that. Actually, I was just like this sucker. I'm like, why did you no, just see, not? That, this is what I'm saying. I know that people yeah. are, are 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 very much pressed to feel like he's a, a representation of African American resistance. Okay, and the thing is that if we took, if African Americans in totality took Killmonger's perspective. And his approach to things, we wouldn't have survived as a people. Exactly. Right. Yeah. exactly. I wanted exactly. somebody else. <laughs> we would have been. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, I wanna, I wanna say, um, just be before I forget, um, I think the decision for uh, again for T'Challa to join the UN, um, I think I would like to think that if Wakanda was a real place, that they wouldn't have made that choice just because they have war dogs all over the world, and they would see, you know, just like. The KKK what stuff that the America does all over. So I, I, I think, think that was, I think that I was think a choice that we did. But he just was enough for peace and love. He's just carrying on what his father did. Yeah, so I think it's a cover. It's a cover. Oh, you know? Very much at a crux. He was at a crossroads. He had an opportunity to change that. Yeah. That, that, like you said yeah. earlier. Uh, 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 um, he was given this kingship. And mm -hmm. everything that came mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And it was at a time where the world was about to knock on his door. Mm -hmm. And the people yeah. and there were people inside that are saying, look, we can't keep things the way that they are. Okay. Right. We can't just sit back mm -hmm. and not do anything. Yeah, yeah. So he was not getting he didn't, it wasn't his choice to join the UN. His father was. That's what his yeah, father yeah, yeah. was. So it's like, what yeah, is yeah. he then? And so was he going to be the kind of, like you said, like, you know, like withdraw from the UN and be like, you know, like, yeah. you guys. Right. Yeah, he has to join yeah. the enemy. So, you know, he better don't come knocking at his door. I think it's a <laughs> cover. Like, for me, it's a cover. Too. It's a cover. Good. Was that realistic? That, uh, that, it's a cover. A lot of yeah. 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 Group that there was a king running around in a black suit and he didn't tell the CIA. That's a bunch of baloney. <laughs> <laughs> That was the most yeah. unrealistic thing 
It was unrealistic. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. something that he would have done. CIA, yeah. he told, that's what he told Chala. But you know, mm -hmm. Daniel Well, the CIA already knew. And they <laughs> exactly. Watch what was going to happen. So like, yeah. I think that he was stuck in that. He was stuck in that role in that home. I think Killmonger, and this is the reason why I said he was one of the books. He, he was mm -hmm. reading the books. He was prepping himself to return there and take over the throne. He was not yeah. a representation of African American struggle. He was a representation yeah. of someone that felt like he should be an absolute monarch and an mm -hmm. empire builder. And that is right. exactly. he, had his own agenda. he has his own agenda. He had his own agenda. Yeah, he did, he did. and yeah, and, yeah. And, it, and it wasn't it wasn't for the people, and I think people no. also need to to clear yeah. that up. I don't think he had genuine interest to help. No. you know, um, he even wasn't if selfish. He, he killed anybody. Yeah, he wasn't so, yeah. and that's and why he, I think that, that's why I'm still blown away how some people feel they can relate to such a character because I'm like I thought we're all well, about a community of uplifting well, uh, each other. Some people like a good villain. Some people like a good villain. Some of you, some people like a good it's deal. It's cathartic. It's very, very cathartic. Yeah. Like I think with um, like his pain, you know, just growing up in the Americas, like he said, like, you know, and being an Oakland kid, right, like, you know, just running around with, like, dreams of a fantasy that he belonged to Wakanda. I think a lot of people, and me, pers like, personally, I was kind of just relating to his pain, you know, just as a Black person, just, you know, existing in a very anti-Black world. And I think with him is like, you know, he became his own, he became the colonizer, basically. That's basically what he yeah. was advocating. Like I related to his pain, but he wanted to use his vengeance as I guess like maybe this hero the the goal for like this empire builder, you know, basically, you know, him joining the SEALs, you know, basically killing other people for the West. I mean, that's basically what colonizers, what white colonizers have done. And I think he wanted to do that with, you know, with Wakanda and vi the vibranium. Um, and I, and that honestly wasn't really a true representation of like no. pan African li liberation. I think. Right. You know? And I think another interesting thing between like a distinction between T'Challa and Killmonger, if you see how they treat their women. Okay. Now Killmonger yeah. is unfortunate <laughs> with his character. Remember what he did with the so-called girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. And then there was that incident when, remember when Zuri died, there was the deputy who came in who actually was a woman. And when he said, burn it all, he like chokehold her. Choke yeah. mm -hmm. So I'm like, why would you want a king like that who has mm -hmm. literally disrespect for women? And you see yeah. how T'Challa sort of, you know, sought counsel and, you yeah. know, advice from the women. And so exactly. that sort of, I know, leads into yeah. the Wakandan yeah. women, but you see that that's another distinction between the two. I'm not exactly. saying that I I, yeah. I, lo I really love T'Challa, but I'm just saying that, mm -hmm. you know, you can really see the stark difference. And you're right, like you said earlier, it's unfortunate that mm -hmm. Killmonger, I felt he could have evolved a bit better yeah. in, in the movie. Mm -hmm. It was just so cut and dry, you know? Even more later, mm -hmm. but the, yeah. the movie wasn't about him. <laughs> He was yeah. Like, <laughs> was funny, really? but he played with part of well. I think the child. Oh, I do not well. agree. He was funny. He was corny. I do not agree. Why do you expect morality? That man, <laughs> that man's acting went over like a lead ball. I am so. What do you expect? You know what do you expect from all these Sorry. I was like, oh my god! Like you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so now it was, was fronting. It was really fronting. There were three people. There were three actors. Like, they, like you can like a character, not like the actor. You can like the actor, yeah. not like the character. There were only three for me. There were only three people. Okay, mm -hmm. that I liked the character and I liked the actor. The actor played the character well and gave the character its own personality. And right. two you like, and one you will not like. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Okay. Who is it? First of all, Okoye. Shuri was like the actress. She did she played that part very, very well. Yes. <laughs> I like the part where she said colonizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she was a princess. And so she let people know that. That's that yes. was, she was yes. a scientist and she was a princess and she let people know that. And so the actress did a very good job. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Not like. Okay, but I, I just, 
Claw. I'm sorry. The actor that played Claw. He played him well. He played him very, very yeah, well. Yeah, I played him well. He, he was a lunatic, and you played that part right. well. I, 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 think, I think I think you're right because he actually, and I like the fact he really indulged in it because he represented that white greed, that yes. white capitalism, and that now, that vulture, you know, that just takes these like these yeah. savages. When he said these savages, I'm like, I hope these white people are listening because I mean that's yeah, how so they good. used to look at us, like well, because they we still were, do. They still do. You know? do. They was, still yeah. do. And he was crazy, but I think. They still do look at us that way. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Yeah. Do I mean, I think, okay. I, yeah, I, just to it's add to the crazy. claw thing, the claw and Agent Ross, I just wanted to say claw is like, you know, the vicious, like, white, like, white colonization, and Ross is like, oh, polite racism, but they're oh, like, yeah. so bad. Yeah. they're both so <laughs> bad, like, anyway. Right, put them in yeah. place. She doesn't let that last for too long, does she? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But Claw was crazy, but I think that his 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 uh his lunacy was a metaphor for deluded white supremacy. Yep. Mm -hmm. un, 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 like unleashed. Yeah. Yep. They couldn't control it. And and mm -hmm. honestly, when you have that level of deluded white supremacy where it muddles your mind to that point, no one can control it, not even the government. And we see that now. What do we see now? What do we see? Yeah. These mass shootings and everything like that. That's mass shootings, the KKK. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so yeah. that's why it was just like he brought that lunacy over. So everything that he said, and right. he, even like the way he interacted individually with people of different mm. colors, that even the way that he thought, I'm sorry, oops, spoiler alert, that he thought Killbugger. Like he had control over Killbugger. Right. I don't know how you think you have control over someone like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And I think that's yeah. an important point. I actually never thought about that, but that's true about Quas. His delusional yeah. supremacy. His mm -hmm. delusional supremacy. Killmonger was very much the. Has anyone ever seen the movie The Spook That Sat by the Door? No. No. Oh, you guys that. Okay. So then I can't. I can't. I can't do the rest. Okay. He was very much that. Is that's homework. Okay. <laughs> you have to see this movie, The Spook That Sat By The Door. Okay. You really know it. It's okay. very, very important because that's what Killmonger was. Mm -hmm. That's what the broader global white supremacist, colonialist, mm -hmm. slaving society is afraid of. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah. they will do anything they, do, they can to rein him in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the biggest mistake that I think Chala made in that mm -hmm. movie. Well, I know he was a, like, Killmonger was a little bit over the deep end. Like he, when he said, I came to kill you, I was like, oh, well, then that's what he was there for. <laughs> but, but the biggest mistake that Chala made and Shuri made and Okoye made and Nakia made is that white man told them what Killmonger was. And yes. They, oh, that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That agent was yeah. like, he's dead. And so when when Chala said to him, "I will not let, uh, I will not leave our weapons in the hand, vibranium in the hands of someone like you, like someone like you, get your hands on vibranium." You don't know me, fam. You yeah. don't even know me. You know what the white man told you about me. Okay. Exactly. Now, yeah. Walker didn't care. <laughs> but yeah. that's what I've been saying. The system. That's what I've been trying to say. The system mm -hmm. always tells yeah, you right. like, we need to think about our black people. Okay. Yeah. What happens? That's what the black people. That's what the system does. What 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 kind of messages do uh, Africans from all over the diaspora? What kind of mm -hmm. messages do they get about African Americans when they spoil? What their messages do they get about African Americans when they watch TV? What right. is it that the white man is telling you about African Americans? Because I can tell you, a lot of times when it's like. O over here, it's like mm -hmm. we're not those regular black, 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 black blacks. We're not. Yeah. When you don't know me, fam, you don't know. Yeah. So that was the biggest mistake that Chala made. And I was like, this is not. Yeah. A okay. Yeah. Right. She was like looking like, and I thought she was going to be the one, like, look, colonizer, like, you really think I'm going to believe you? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, Shuri, no, Shuri. Yeah. <laughs> Shuri, no. Yeah. Again, no. I think, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think just to go just the off of that, um, right, right, just right. between like Claw and like Agent like Agent Ross, like both of them, you know, they're white men. Both of them, you know, um, the both of them, they're white men. The both of them, they actually feel entitled, actually, to the vibranium, the the yeah. vibranium that belongs right. to Wakanda. You know, Claw was just kind of like you know this delusional, 
uh, this like delusional, vicious, like white colonizer and Agent Ross, you know, again, was like the polite racist, the, the kind CIA agent. <laughs> But at the end, I actually got T'Challa and the Wakandans to actually show their vibranium yeah. to the, rest of the world. You know, right. I just like, what he said, and I, what he yeah, said, and I would like to believe that wouldn't have happened. What yeah. he, he said, you're gonna, you're gonna need all the help you can get. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're for the, real. You, you. <laughs> it was just like it was like so many levels back. That was yeah. yeah. Quickly, then we'll finish up. Okay. You gotta talk about the women. Mm -hmm. You gotta yeah. talk about the women. Like you said that like Chala listened to the women. He didn't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. I'll be back. Okay, it's a baby. No problem. Yeah. So he really okay. did not have a choice. The women mm -hmm. ran that nation. I think that the one of the best. A lot of, and he's, he's very, very huge. That's very uh, normal in Africa. A lot of women run things. Exactly. <laughs> Especially in a oppressed society or a subjugated society, the more and more patriarchy yeah. they get, the, the harder and yeah. harder it is to resist mm -hmm. that oppression. Yeah, and, and I think Leila, just going back on what you said before about how, um, like a lot of non-black Muslims, they don't know how Islam is performed um, in a lot of African countries. I think the same thing goes with gender as well, because you know Wakanda, as you know, as uncolonized, you know, African country, we really don't know how gender actually operates there, because you know we're we're still looking at it through like this Western lens where like you know we're we're so used to seeing patriarchy as like the norm but um you know it's just like very different so i think i would like to like i think it's a i think it's a greater conversation that we can have about how gender actually operates in wakandan society and a lot of african societies actually too mm -hmm. so i think that's well, pretty think interesting it also it also happened here um yeah the black muslim movement you know women were very much a stable part of that yeah I mean, at like uh, uh the more science temple uh the nation mm -hmm. of Islam, you know that they they their existence was dependent on the, the contributions of the women inside of mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. that would have been gone a long time ago if it wasn't for the work of clara muhammad Mm -hmm. and, and structuring uh the uh, structuring the nation and structuring educational systems within that nation and everything like that mm -hmm. so it's like you cannot as a as an oppressed people kind of like not give women their due in the society and their voice in the society in african country i mean uh african you know countries most african countries are matriarchal like Power is mm -hmm. I mean, the woman have the power. It's yeah. only when Islam came that sort of thing changed. But still, women oh, have the last word. They have the last word. We're gonna be triggering a lot of non-black Muslims right now. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, Islam, but it's in Islam, women have power. That they do, they do. But the thing is, like the try, like you know, the travesty version of this you are trying to sell to us: a woman needs to be peaceful, needs to be stay yeah. No, we know that's not true. Women usually control things, and it's always been always been like that before Islam came. And but when they try to sell us Islam, they tell us, "Oh yeah, you have to do it this way." But we know better than that. We well, that's what that. happened here. That's what happened here. When when okay, we know better than that. The radical as the nation of Islam was, but there was a system, and it had its faults because every system and every nation has its faults. But there was this respect for women, and look, look at Malcolm X and the things that he said about women, and the relationship that he had with Betty Shabazz and his sister, mm -hmm. and other women. And so what happened was when there was this influx of Muslims from patriarchal Muslim societies, okay, mm -hmm. South Asia and the Middle East, okay, and they said, listen, Blackie, we know mm -hmm. uh, more about Islam than you do, okay? Right. And yeah. there was this mm -hmm. shift, there became this shift to controlling Black Muslim women instead mm -hmm. of protecting them and nurturing them. Okay. Even though that's antithetical to Islam, but they, they still, it still happened. And the only thing is, is that honestly, you got to unmute yourself. Uh, uh, oh, I, no, yeah, she did. 
when that what 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 ha what the 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 fact of the matter is is that now black Muslim men, African American and and and, and African descent black Muslim men here, they have to come to grips with the reality. First of all, that's not what Islam teaches. Yes. Okay? Second, yeah, you know better than that. They're going we're doing that. Okay, because your systems, the mosques stay open because of women. Right. Yes. Schools stay running because of women. Yeah. Organizations right. are are created and maintained because of women. And it's like you're not going to have any kind of liberation if you are consistently focusing your attention on oppressing and suppressing Muslim women. And that's the yeah. thing that black Muslims had to get a grip on. And that's the thing that 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 Black Panther shows. It's just like, yeah, in this society, yeah, they gotta listen to the women. <laughs> Right. Yeah. For their yeah. basic survival, they have to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think it was it was good. It was like really well done. It was well I done. Think, it was well I think, done. I think yesterday Layla shared an article with like an art. I don't know if you read it, but the the writer, you know, was really, you know, he was yeah. It was a lot of things which, but I thought were important. No, she was trying to sort of compare and contrast. I don't know if you ladies are uh, read it. Um, the feminism in Black Panther versus that of Wonder Woman. You know, and I thought it was, you know, she mentioned some interesting nuances. Um, one, for instance, which I think kind of jumped out at me was the fact that you found that, you know, I've seen Wonder Woman. I just saw it because I said, you know what, let me complete this whole DC Marvel stuff. So I said, okay, mm -hmm. let me just watch it. And I waited for that to come to TV. And so, you know, with the ladies of Black Panther, we already know what they're all about. But with the Wonder Woman, her issue was that, you know, there's a part in the movie where she finally gets the strength to sort of fight one of these enemies, but it's almost because her, the love of her life has just died or something. Like she uses, oh, yeah. you yeah. know, she, she yeah. uses like a man's, the like anger, her anger. That the anger to, like, uh, right, and the loss. To, to, to finally... jumpstart jump the anger, that, that, right. that strength. Right, to finally yeah. get the strength. Whereas you can see yeah, in, in Black Panther, like the, the ladies are just naturally that way. They're naturally okay. that way. <laughs> right. They don't need, you know, the man's permission. They can just be who they are, even whatever decisions they make. I mean, you could see with Nakia's character, she's like, you know, the guy was like, oh, you know, you could be, you'll be a stubborn queen. And she's like, that's if I wanted to be a queen, you know? Yeah, exactly. But even so, that is fine with me. So I like the fact that, you know, even though the man was trying to impose some title or something on or a lifestyle she said no i have my thing going on kind of thing mm -hmm. right so she yeah. you know her her character was not really i felt or her ambitions were not dependent on t'challa's feelings you know she didn't care if he hurt her yeah. feeling you know hurt his feelings but you yeah. find a stark contrast with wonder woman where when i saw it i was just like i'm so glad i didn't see it in theater because i now i know why it's just i found it it, it was just pathetic because oh, i'm like you know a you common, that's a common trope when it comes to superheroes like the superhero you know? gets reinvigorated because the 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 love interest is in danger you'll see that even with male yeah. superheroes as well right so I, I i don't know whether or not that's enough to kind of like make a distinction between the feminism in black Panther and feminism one in wonder woman i refuse to see wonder woman so i can't i will never be able to make right it. <laughs> is it is it yes, because right. of like the actor herself the actress oh no yeah. oh no please okay I, Oh, for me it is. For me it is. Yeah. In a society yeah. where everybody, I mean, come on. I mean, we live in a society with with, with yeah. and biggest and all kinds of stuff. Right. Yeah. You know what? I don't discriminate. Well, I watch, you know what? I don't discriminate. Is, I watch it so I can get something out of it and write a story. Right. <laughs> That's the thing because you know sometimes. No, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna use true. that to my advantage. That's what right. I Right. Because you know what, Layla, the good thing is why I'm glad I watched it because it now gives me a bit more armor. Like I can throw yeah. facts at yeah. people, right? Yeah, exactly. Because I'm like, you think by I don't the way. Like it? I'll read it. I'm not going I to know. See, yeah. but the thing is that for me, I intentionally waited until it hit TV. So once it was on TV, you know, you, you know, yeah. I said, let me just sit through it. And I'm like, to be honest, I it took me two days to finish because there were parts where I was <laughs> rolling my eyes, and I was like, that's okay, then. See, I'm not, I, I'm not a fan. Of, I'm not, not, not a fan of Wonder Woman. And I used to watch uh -huh. the Linda Carter Wonder Woman when I was. A oh wow. Okay. Oh, wow. So, I'm just, I'm just really not a fan of Wonder Woman. Yeah. 
Here and I, I get it. You know what? And now I actually get it because now I look back, I'm like, you know what? She doesn't represent all women. And that's what pissed oh, me no. off when people right. were trying to claim it, you know? I was like, oh, oh this is, okay. you know? Shuri and Nakia, they don't represent all women. Right. Okay. And that's yeah. the thing. It's that's, div that's diversity yeah. for you. And that's what it is. That That's, 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 that's hegemony right there. When you try to press this very, very finite, put these finite mm -hmm. parameters on womanhood that you yeah. have issue in that problem you know and so it's just like they don't represent even right. even even womanhood even black womanhood i think yeah. that they what they represent a departure from that regular old model type of woman in superhero uh, uh movies where you either have to be like helpless yeah okay, like his girlfriend mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. and what is it? Oh my God, I couldn't stand Spider Man because of that redhead. Made me sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Every time he had to always try to save her, like, girl, dude, come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, go somewhere safer. Right. And, yeah. Uh, or you have to be like this sexy kind of femme fatale that uses. Oh, this yeah. Well, you here. can tell by the clothing, though. In and, a way. Well, you yeah. have to do it in high heels. You know what? What if he doesn't approach? Why he appeals to other people so we can really like make those sweeping assumptions? Like, if we don't like it, eh, that's our problem. You know, other people like it, you know? <laughs> you know other people like it, but it, yeah. reinforces, it reinforces certain things. And, and we get affected yeah. by it. So I that's the reason we have unique really representation for, you know. Well, you get affected by it because if the popular culture is just giving you a uh, kind of like a unilateral rendition of what womanhood is and you don't fit within that, then you're affected by it. That's why we need to be represented. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's why we need to be represented. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, none of them were loud enough for me. <laughs> you need a loud yeah. black woman. Okay. <laughs> That's the next step because yeah. that told me to go my nerves. But that, but I think mm. that, that the women were definitely a departure. They were definitely a departure from well, the whole movie was because I really th I think one of the interesting things about this movie is that for me, what I saw it as is is, is they definitely borrowed from the Star Wars model. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think that's the reason why we have so much to talk about. And mm -hmm. I mean, just even the use of the costumes early on and people going into the theater, I mean, it was very, very much Star Wars. I think they saw it as that. And I think that was right. very important <laughs> because most of the Marvel comic movies, this is the only Marvel co comics movie that actually did that, asked those really hard questions you have. Instead of the superhero having to worry about the just the flat villain destroying yeah. the world, and you know the damsel in distress because that's all of them. Yeah. That's all of them. 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 Um, you had like an entire. You had all of these different conversations and levels and how people interacted with each other. And even just the final battle scene where you had those different battles occurring and they were switching between all of them. That's Star Wars. Marvel Comics never did it that well before. And so <laughs> they probably, so I think yeah. that they did that and I think that they bar I think that they also decided just like the the women in Star Wars that they were going to make sure that the women characters were not just like either a damsel of distress or a film right. mm -hmm. yeah so that's why you have like these fantastic uh characters and they got they got some really good uh, they they should have done I'm sorry you're gonna hate me they should have done a bit of a better job on the male actors for the main character <laughs> and but it's just like they really did a good job even like with Angela Bassett, you know. Oh yeah, she was good. <laughs> she was good. Yeah, but I'm I'm wondering if it was intentional though. There's a part of that Bassett. That's the thing. That's who she was being. She was Angela Bassett. Like you've seen Angela Bassett act that way before. You right. see her do those things before. Okay, so that's the reason why it's just like you know Angela Bassett did this fa fabulous job. Angela Bassett did Angela Bassett's job. Okay, mm -hmm. they had she's a black, black woman, and she's a black woman. Black woman, and she did her job. I didn't like for yeah. That's a whole other thing. I like her hair. <laughs> he, he did not. He did not come off as the mystic for me at all. But uh, <laughs> you know, these three, these three actresses, okay, right. and these three female characters are very, very unique to the mm -hmm. superhero brand. Okay. Right. And it's just mm -hmm. like, I think that they did a phenomenal job with that. I'm hoping that it's a catalyst for a shift in the narrative. It's not in and of itself. You can't have a shift in narrative just with one film. It's just mm -hmm. not going to happen that way. Yeah. 
people will be more. And I and I think I read an article where they're thinking of a standalone for Okoye. Oh yeah, I read that. Oh yeah, too. like a, tridual, <laughs> like a, a trilogy. trilogy. And I'm her. like, I'm yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> okay. I, that, that'll be interesting though. Apparently in the comics though, I don't know if this is true. I don't know. I, I you know, I think I'm jumping on the comics, but you know, there's an interesting also dynamic, and this may enter another discussion if that trilogy does happen because of about the relationships. Yeah, with the Malaji and all those women in that guard right. are potentially so that sure. might um traumatize a few people and they have to be ready for that if they do think of that, you mm -hmm. know, particular uh script. I mean, so that's something you know. I remember somebody was telling me on this Facebook yeah. group, which I'm part of, and you know, I was just like my mouth trapped. I was like, Really? It's there? And I'm like, What? Oh, you, and didn't so, know that? you didn't well, know that you uh, all the women in the in the guard. You didn't I know didn't. that? Oh, I knew I that going that. in. I knew that going in. Well, see, the thing was, is like, I knew that going on in. First of all, and I'm okay, okay with it. You know why? Because I'm watching, right. I'm watching a movie about a king. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You have a monarch king. So it's just like, you know, what? So what? What did you expect from a monarch king? He's a monarch. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what happened? Do you know what happens with Nakia in in, in the movie? No, actually, I I don't oh, know girl. yet. I have not read the comics <laughs> at all. Oh my well, god! Well, you know what? I'm even trying. I'm I'm going I'm going to the library to get those. Just to find out. Just to find out the backstory for that guard, for the women's guard, that guard uh, uh Chala, okay, Okoye in particular, and Nakia. Oh my god! I don't believe y'all don't know that. I mean, are they really like they're like a, a a couple? Like I didn't know this. I'm not saying nothing. You gotta read. <laughs> you gotta read well, <laughs> we can. I wonder if they're gonna be doing like if they're doing be doing another movie, would they be like uh adding like new characters like Storm for like. Well, that's um, what yeah, because Storm and Chichello are in the comics, that's apparently. Yeah, that's, I, yeah. Okay, which okay again, you gotta read about the Kia. Okay. Okay. Like you said, we don't know how gender uh, operates in this. Like, that's you know, the thing. I mean, that that's what I've noticed with these Marvel comics. To be honest, like gender is very fluid, and you know, you have to sort of, you know, brace yourself on that. I think aspect, and some people may not be, you I, know, aware of that. So yeah. I think that I think that they purposely took took certain elements of the the. The oh, they took it out. They were like different. This movie was like four hours, apparently. Yeah. And people were like, why did you give me the whole four hours? You know? <laughs> four <laughs> hours? That's crazy. To those characters that well, you'll probably make it on DVD. Right. You'll probably make it on DVD. Blu-ray or whatever. There's a lot of things about the characters you won't necessarily like, especially Chala. And maybe that's the reason why I don't like him, because I you know, know a little bit about his character in the comics. But... Uh, um, they, it, but the comics themselves go part and parcel with Marvel, okay? Right. And mm -hmm. I think that the filmmakers decided not to do it, which I'm so glad that they decided to take certain elements out. I mean, you have artistic license with everything. Right. And so it's like, I'm so glad that they did that because they, they, they made those characters very, very phenomenal and dynamic. And I think it's like the type of characters that every... Uh, uh, w women and girls from different backgrounds can, can kind of look at and, and think about um, yeah. who they are, who right. those characters are and how they interact with someone who's ultimately a monarch that is their king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. That is their king. So, but, you know, I, I, I really think that they did a good job. I'm glad that they, they did it that way. All yeah. right. So, I want to, it's been an hour. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I need to let go, but we didn't talk about the the tension between African Americans and Africans. Yeah, oh, we talked. Oh. We talked about it outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was very. That was you know. I felt that, and I don't know why. You know, all the. I mean, a lot of people who watch the movie. I haven't mentioned it, and you know, you can feel it. You can feel the tension. The mm -hmm. tension is right there. But you know, like I said in the past, and with you, Layla, I feel like we need to like work our differences. And, yeah. Uh, we really need to work out differences because you know our relationship yeah. is very bad. We're not gonna, you know, we, we can't she go good it. We can't, you know, mess our word. We need to, you know, for the future of, uh, you know, of black people moving ahead. We have yeah. to come together. We have to stop listening to the colonizer. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I'm not against diversity. I am, ag I am for diversity, but it has to be done well. 
and mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I feel like you know, Africans are struggling in Africa because of colon- colonialism, and here too, you know, most African descendants are still, you know, um, being affected because of white supremacy. It's like you know, it's like on one hand, you know, they did a lot of damage in Africa, I and mean, here they turn around and they still continue. That's like we're going far to divide black people all over. And yeah. we, a lot of people don't well, see that, and we need to come together. So, I also think that black yeah. Muslims need to come together to work a little. Black, bit. Yeah, it's not white supremacy. There is Arab supremacy. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of it. Yeah. That's a lot of it. Yeah. But you know, if yeah. we cannot get ourselves together first before we can go after, it's like we have to get half of each other first. Right. And then, right. then we can go and. And then if we can go and say, okay, you know, black Muslim, you know, you need to be a little more yeah. enlightened about us, Muslims, about black yeah. Muslims, mm-hmm. knowing our deen, you know, you need to be, you know, to put your, you know, your bias aside and see us as human. You need to put your bias aside and see that we know what we're talking about. Right. You need to put your privilege yeah. aside to know that we're also black and Muslim and we deserve a spot at the table. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think also the, that, that tension between uh, like, Sorry, that tension between like African Americans and of course, uh, you know, um, black people from the, uh, you know, Africans, I think it also stems from like what I've realized with my interactions, of course, with my fellow Ugandans, and mm-hmm. then my interaction with African Americans. The divide is yes, we can blame the colonizers, but at the same time, I think we each don't understand our histories. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, and I've noticed Ugandans, they don't seem to comprehend, you know, the real depth and the generational trauma, you know, that Blacks in America have gone through. Yes, a lot of, you it's know, not and I, Uganda, it's all African, actually. Yeah, a lot of them feel exactly. detached. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, course, they feel right, detached and, from it. The right, they feel the touch, and then I think they can't relate to it. And of course, like you said, you know, even you're in Uganda, you know, you that's because our people try to hide it. That's what happens. Right, like in class, right. where they hide, hide it. it. Yeah, it's like, they, like, they don't even mention that, oh, we sold our brothers. No, they don't. Right. Like, so, we but go out think, thinking that we, nothing's yeah. wrong with us. We come here, we feel right. like, you know, we feel like the African, the African American right. are complaining too much. But when we start to dig deeper, we see that a lot of damage has been done and that that's what Jay China right. was mad. He's like, right. I cannot join yeah. you Panthers because we need to right all these wrongs. I was really, mm-hmm. when he said, made that yeah. comment, I was like, exactly what I've been saying. We need to right all those wrongs. We cannot just go and follow the ancestors. Right. They did a lot of things wrong. He's like, he's a child that chose to admit. It's the same thing that has happening. Yeah, but I think, <laughs> yeah, but then you're right. Because yeah. also another aspect is, you know, education because you education. find that also with mm-hmm. African Americans, they also feel them, and I have to be honest, some of them don't understand the continent or the depth of colonialism and how too it traumatized yeah. people and that, so yeah. sort of where we're coming from. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I get it. I've seen an African American sort of, you know, studies course and it's fine. They kind of, you know, get some semblance of what's happening, but of course most of the, you know, information is focused on what happened here. See, that's the same thing they did. Like I you know and so that's why i kind of wish you know if some of these especially these hbcus you know i don't know if it's there but just really where people can appreciate you know that african culture likewise I also wish that, you know, in the continent of Africa, people also need to be, you know, educated. Both hands, we need to get in the both, you know, that, you know, that aspect. And not only that, you know, when they come over to the U.S. or at least force themselves, like I even tell some of my friends, I'm like, when you come here, you know, don't just have these, you know, sweeping statements. Have you ever spoken to an African-American? Exactly. Really engaged with them and yeah. understood sort of them. their situation. And it's so what? for me... They're right, like, and, they're like, oh, we're not different from Avis. And it's so different. And you and know, for me, I'm yeah, like, they don't understand the struggle. And it's they like, don't. and I think on, just, on this, <laughs> it's, we uh, can yeah. go it all night. We're not gonna right. be about it. It'll, it'll take forever. Yeah. But I think in the I'll end, like it is this raw as well. Yeah. So, yeah. but one last thing before I leave. But yeah, what I'm saying to summarize is that you know, for me, I've also lived in Canada, so I have seen the black experience in different places, and I think mm-hmm. what has helped me was trying to engage because a lot of people assume, oh, the Canadian experience is the same as the U.S. experience, but it's totally mm-hmm. different. Oh, oh, totally no, no, no. different. See, that's you know? And so, yeah. so, pe- so yeah, people, some, people have to advantage. understand that. Yeah, you our know? advantage is us coming from a continent, experiencing all these all these people because it's very different. It's like if you don't leave Africa, it's like you don't become black until you leave Africa. Actually, 
you don't understand it when you leave africa you're like oh my goodness this is crazy you know it's like when you come here and you force yourself to understand the african-american then you see what's really happening it's like yeah. african need to open their eyes you know like you know african-american are a little detached about colonialism africans also detached about the slave trade it's like we need to educate ourselves and try to you know see eye to eye we need to settle our differences but that's gonna take some time it's gonna take some doings it's mm -hmm. really hard it's like you know it's like i'm i'm yeah. reaching out to my people because i my like my i have family members in the u.n i have family members in like you know high places of government that's one of it's like i really want us to sit down and have it's like whenever I see, I say people need to like come together. I'm not making those assumptions. I really want to see them through. Right. So I'm working personally yeah. on those things. Well, I mean, I think, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. yeah, I think to add to that as well, um, like Ramna said, I think more conversations just across the diaspora um, mm -hmm. of Black people just recognize there's literally Black people on like every continent, right? And um, I think a lot of conversations like after Black Panther, I, I thought was very, very um, US centric. No, I mean, superficial, but it was like very centered on like, you know, uh, African Americans and the trauma um, that they've experienced. And I really, I, and I understood mm -hmm. it because, you know, I grew up here in America, but it also kind of made it seem um, as if it was very particular to like, you know, the Black people here it in America. African, I'm sorry, it was not African-American trauma. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, it was not. He was a kid who's- No, 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 not, no, no, not, no, no, not, not for Killmonger. No, was, not, not for Killmonger. Like, and it's like this whole <laughs> idea, can you open up the curtain, babe? Because no one can see yeah. me. This whole idea, yes. one of the things that I could not stand about this movie, all right? And I'm going to mm -hmm. say, everyone's so in love with this movie. One of the things, that I take my glasses off. One of the things I could not stand about this movie yeah, is that they, in both instances, outside of this ideal of Wakanda, okay, which was not mm -hmm. influenced by the white man, black people aren't worth crap. That's the message that it sends. I'm like, oh my God, does anybody else not see that? You know, you have your king, and everybody else is confident and everything like that. But it's just, <laughs> no manga's outside of it. So he is a uh, 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 dream. But that's a tension, though. I gotta get that's a tension, though. That's how it is. Black people across. You, uh, you, Uganda, Nigeria, that's Tokyo, mm -hmm. America, that's vacation. It's superficial that people didn't mention that. People, it's saying to all of us who are part of a heritage of complete survival and thriving mm -hmm. to the point where yeah. whenever we get to a certain level of success, the white power structure brings us down. And I'm so sick of that. I'm so sick of this idea that, oh my God, yeah. you, you, you're not worth anything because but, you've been colonized, you've been enslaved, you've been this, you've been that. And this whole thing is like, oh, if yeah. it wasn't for the white people, then we would be all okay. That's baloney. That's baloney, because first of all, yeah. we're human beings, and we was dogging each other out anyway. But this yeah. whole idea that, you know, you have to be like in this pristine, Afrocentric culture yeah. to be a viable, mm -hmm. productive Black person globally mm -hmm. is BS. And I can't stand yeah. the fact that the movie conveyed that mess. That was not yeah. African American trauma. That is not the way most African Americans responded in that in my ancestry to that trauma. Because mm -hmm. we'd be dead. So it's just mm -hmm. like, are you freaking kidding me? Oh my God, that was mm -hmm. not African American trauma. Killmonger was not a not a representation of that. And anybody mm -hmm. that wants to argue with me about it, let's go. <laughs> no, oh, <I'm> not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I sorry. think, well, I I think like the discussions, no, 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 because I think the discussions that followed it is because most people, like a lot, I, yeah, I think, like, I think almost everybody, they're only familiar with, like, only with that. And it felt yeah. like, but there, there's also, like, you know, descendants of slaves in South America. There's yeah, black right. people in the Caribbean, there's black people in Brazil, which is police brutality in Brazil is. Oh, just like it's, on it's another, it's, it's terrible. It's a genocide. Like, it's, like, it's a genocide. It's, honestly, it's, it's, it's a this genocide. idea of like, yeah, it, it's this idea of black social death where colonization and how it 
how it operates, it's different on the continent. Um, it's different in the UK. It's different in Australia. It's different in India and the US and the it's Caribbean everywhere. and like, you know, yeah, South America. So I think like, again, like understanding these histories, but I think uh, it's all, but also understanding that, you know, just because our trauma isn't necessarily the same, that we can right. still have these conversations, you know, just because it operates differently, because we're all still like, we you know, we're all still black people. You know, yeah. even yeah, see us as black people at the end of the day. At the end of the day, they see us as black people. At the end of the day, they see us as black people. So, yeah. But how do we see? Yeah, that's black social death. That's black social death. <laughs> How that starts to become a part of that, and how and and what and the role that our faith plays in that as well, mm -hmm. and I think that's one one big challenge that we have as Black Muslims is that we are a part of this larger uh, this larger broader um, social construct of yeah. of yeah. of, of de demeaning and degrading Blackness, mm -hmm. and and some of us have very much internalized that. And we have deluded ourselves as Muslims into thinking that um, that somehow disappears in, mm -hmm. in an Islamic context. Ideally, it does, but in reality, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fear and yeah. application are two different things. Fear and application mm -hmm. are two different things. Even right, but not even here. But yeah, oh sure. A lot of times, like to uh, really like they don't like the fact that I talk about this same brotherhood. And sister, mm -hmm. but it's a reality, and and I think that Black Muslims need to to kind of like open up their eyes to that reality, mm -hmm. and, exactly, and, and yeah, embrace that and appreciate each other, so that we can mm -hmm. grow, we can and we can we can create a collaborative and a collective of a, a collective of mutual respect in our faith, because right. we need to do that for ourselves, because non-Black mm -hmm. Muslims over and over again have proven that they're not interested in doing that overall. I'm not talking. Yeah. About individual behavior. I'm not even talking about a, a, yeah, yeah. a cosmic group behavior. I'm talking about overall, because if you have someone that it has learned and knows and still is asked that question about mm -hmm. why are you including blackness? And the woman must not have read the book because <laughs> he yeah. talked about black, 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 Muslims, black, 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 and black. <laughs> when you still have that, it just shows you that they're not interested at this point and doing it. They don't respect us. Some yeah. people don't even see us as humans. Yes, that's the reality. The same people that are reading Quran do not see you as a human being. And mm -hmm. so unless we turn around and we decide that we're going to build something and we're gonna we're going yeah. to support each other yeah. and empower each yeah. other, then they never will. But I think, mm -hmm. that, like, honestly, I, and just to jump on your point, I think what needs to happen, to be honest, and this may sound exhausting, but even us as like black people sometimes you just have to like you know go there and educate some of these people because no not carrying the water nope, huh? nope. not carrying um, water. i can't i can't i'm too tired i mean i feel like i you get can it do but you know what people. okay you can do individual no. fine but the no. thing is like no. what i've noticed i have to open up a book i've had listen i'm a i'm an african-american muslim woman okay right. i've had to yeah. open books and learn about cultures and learn about people and learn about what they like, what they don't like, how to talk to them, how not to talk to them, what right. happened to their culture, their history, their grandpapa's history, all of that, yeah. stuff, I learned, all of that crap. I'm not mm -hmm. teaching you jack. You crack yeah. open a book. And you don't owe it to them as well. I'm not carrying yeah. water for white people. Yeah. Yeah. Read. Yeah. Yeah. Read. Read. But you know what? I'm not carrying water for no mm -hmm. daggone body. Right. Pick up your <laughs> bucket yourself and learn yeah. something. Pick up a book. You're right. And exactly. Pick up a book. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. What and, I will and, do, and you're right. right yes. one second. What I will do, right. what I will do is I will sit with my fellow blacks and be mm -hmm. like, I know yeah. that there's a mm -hmm. that I have a gap in my understanding of your experiences. That's what I want to learn about. That's what we're going to go in and we're going to share this stuff. And we're going to do this stuff that I will do. So okay. if, if, Africa, if a black, if, if someone from Nigeria or Cote d'Ivoire or, or Sudan yeah. or whatever is like, listen, Layla, let's talk about this. Let's learn about this from each other. That legwork, I'm more than happy to do. Okay. okay. 
But yes. no, I'm not doing it for And I agree with you. And I agree with you. And you have a very strong, valid point. I mean, but I think sort of where somebody I'm coming from. She's tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is where I'm coming from also, because my concern is this, is that what I've seen, especially with some of the masjids, you know, and mm -hmm. let's say boards, and even when you look at our Muslim conventions and conferences, right, there is a lack, to be honest, a representation of blackness on those boards. And so, you know, you even find our institutions are not really, you know, well, you know, they don't just represent us at all. And there's a part of me that feels, you know what, sometimes you have to push those doors open and say, you know what? I don't want to push know. the doors open. I don't want to push the doors open. They know about us. They know about us. These yeah. institutions and marches and everything, like, oh, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, da -da 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 -da. oh, enslaved Africans, they'll, they'll spout all of that crap and nonsense out. And still at the mm -hmm. end of the day, okay, look at my mm -hmm. black son, and be like, nigga, I know you stole something from this masjid, okay? Look at right. my black hand yeah. and be like, oh, this sister don't belong here. What are you doing here, sister? All right, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. That you can, you, they know, they know these these organizations, these ignas and instas. Yes, I said it. These ignas and yeah. instas, everything like that, okay? They know, and they're, they they exploit it to a certain level, and they still leave your black behind at the door. And they've done it for the last twenty five years now because they went run. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eighteen years. All right, seventeen. Mm -hmm. Because they came running the black Muslims after September eleventh when Whitey was on their case. Okay, because mm -hmm. they were so close, they wanted so badly to rub up against the white man and live in their neighborhoods and not want to deal with black people at all. And when they realized, oh, wait a second, they mad at us and they don't like us. Hey, Blackie, why don't you come protect us? Okay, so they did that and they yeah. opened the door and they're like, oh, let's look, let's listen, and everything like that. So it happened the women's movement, you know, the same thing the women's movement, you know, let's leave it exactly. black right. after. Yeah. Uh, they when need support. They come and black black women. They're gonna ask them to leave you behind. No, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's also and just like and I'm something not for me, like either. yeah. I'm not marching. I'm not marching with you. I'm not doing. It. I'm not. Doing it. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, and yeah. also just to add that because like the first thing, um, like a lot of like immigrants, like these immigrant non-black Muslims do when they come here, is that they see that if they want to succeed in this country, the first thing they do is distance themselves from any black people they see um from That's like true. black people struggles from black people movements just to kind of climb this ladder of success this ladder of whiteness that. and seen? you know and even within like you know my own msa you know you think you know these immigrant muslims you know they've had their children here they grew up here but they still have you know strong sentiments of like anti-blackness and what i, I feel is that don't get involved in these people build, <laughs> don't I get involved dies, like diasporic communities of black people need to build this like black muslim anthology black muslim resistance something specific to us with other black people because honestly you know black social death it doesn't um it, it it's not a race just you know because of faith yeah. um if there are any you yeah. know allies you want to come they can come and help and whatever but i think to make our purpose be to go and teach anti-black muslims that we are, you know, worthy of our humanity is something I don't think but is worth movement, doing just because it doesn't exist. The movement is already going on, though. It's like, you know, people are working out for three years now. A lot, of people are, a lot of people are doing that already, like, you know, fighting the blackness, anti-blackness movement. But, you know, there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. But they're not motivated, yeah. they're not motivated yeah. to real change because you have, you have organizations like the Muslim Anti-Racism Collaborative. Yeah, with my worry. Yeah. For right. years. Ready to train their ignorant behinds, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where's the yeah. organizational trainer? Has Isna or Ikna and, and then, or yeah, what yeah. is that one with the where Humza used to say that asinine stuff? That one, R -I -S. That, oh, there is conference in trial, yeah, yeah. it done yeah. True organizational level, mm -hmm. uh, anti race education. No, mm -hmm. they have not because they're not interested in that. And it even goes That's worse true. because they'll sit up there and they'll say, oh, look at Muslims and look at, yeah, and the black Muslims too and use black Muslim bodies. And then at the end of the day, when it's time for comes for grants and funding and stuff like that, they keep it very much in their communities. 
okay? And they're like, no, look at you poor black people in the ghettos. We're not giving you any of this money. They do not, they do not, they do not mutually support and uplift organizations that could make a paradigm shift because they're not interested. It's all a bunch of optics. I've been jaded by it for too long. I'm sorry. I hope someone yeah. gives me positivity because right now the glass is empty. It's not even half empty. It's just yeah, empty. It like, is. I see very yeah. few redeeming, redeemable uh, uh, things happening. Okay. There are a few out mm -hmm. there, but not nearly enough because even those people who, who, who sit back and talk about they're there for or social justice and liberation for everyone, the yeah. way they treat their fellow fellow black social justice advocates and activists mm -hmm. behind doors is uh, is abysmal. It yeah. is just simply and plainly abysmal. And they try to give lip service and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the reason why I'm just like feeling like that. I, I totally respect where you're coming from, Ramla. Right. I'm like, listen, at this point, I'm just feeling very much that like, like, like Isra said, black people need to build on their own. Okay, and it yes. may be small, but it will be ours. And the one thing that will happen, okay, one of the things that will potentially happen, all right, is that as black people and as black people in the United States, we have an extensive heritage and American ownership, and we have African American Muslims where it's just like, listen, there's certain things and certain perspectives and certain avenues that your Arab behind is not going to get to, your South Asian behind is not going to get to. It's yeah. not going to happen. It's happening with the African American people, and so it's just like that's why we need to like come together and build something because I don't want to teach anybody anything. Yeah. I've spent all my life having to learn. You spent all your life having to learn. Papasia spent all her life having to learn. When do we, when do people just turn around and say, I am going to learn on my own because they're out there. The, We're the, supposed to read, read, damn it. Read. All they have to do is read. I can give a whole yeah. bunch of websites and books and everything like that because bla the, the black Muslim reads that we just did, we know the scholarship is out there. You saw all those books. Right, why right. They, just listen, why, get yourself, get yourself Swad Abdul Khabir, get yourself uh, Sherman Jackson, and start from there, and you can just move your behind on. Look at bloggers. Look at Marguerite Aziz. Why are you not reading her stuff? Okay, because you don't want to know. Look at what was that? The one that did the one, uh, the the rebuttal. Hold in, uh, Muhammad. We're oh, yeah. out there. Isra writes blogs. I write blogs. Yeah. Read a freaking blog. I'm not gonna sit there and carry your pail so that you can learn something because right. because it's your Islamic mandate to do so. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said that we're supposed to know each other. All right. So start freaking knowing. I'm not doing it for yeah. you because I have to do it. I have to do it for myself. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, yeah. We do it for survival. We do it for basic survival, like social survival. Yeah. Basically. We have yeah. to survival, but but you know what? Guess what? We have the comp competency now. We yeah. have yeah. perspective. So That's now true. we can come together. Yes. That's the mm -hmm. thing. Like, That's the thing. Because yeah. we've already had to learn outside of our myopic cultures and everything. Yeah. Like we had to yeah. extend ourselves. We've been, okay. we've been dead yeah. back. <laughs> we've been dead yeah. back. Okay, we've so been no, back. I'm not going to sit up there and sit in a space where I will be subject to not only anti-blackness, but m racial microaggressions from Daisy and Arab mm -hmm. and white right. Muslims. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, I'm human because I'm like, why are you dumb yeah. behind in the first place? Because you know how they act. <laughs> okay, so, so the funny thing is, we 